Boy, you're quiet. Is something supposed to be happening? Just making sure you got it on right. Well, we'll see soon enough, won't we? There we go. I think we're on. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Mount Cory United Methodist Church. I'm Mike Noggle, the pastor here. So glad to see all of you survived the weather this past week and made it here all right. And I'm glad those of you who are joining us online have done so and chosen us to spend your hour with. Uh, we greatly appreciate it and hope that you get uh, blessed by your time with us uh, together. Um, some announcements I want to share with you uh, this morning. Uh, first of all, 
It's February already. Can you believe it? So uh, the newsletter came out this past week. Uh, you should have received it by email. Uh, there's also some copies that have names on them in, on the table there as you came in. Uh, if you do not receive or have not received the newsletter and would like to receive one, particularly those of you who are online, uh, please let us know. We can get one to you. They're also on our Facebook, our church Facebook page. John's so good about getting those posted on there, so you can certainly see that there. Uh, also, uh, the uh, 2022 officer sheet, roles of ministry, is on the table uh, back there. So if you, uh, it has Mount Corey on one side, Pleasant View on the other. If you would like a copy of that to see who's doing what this year, uh, please feel free to pick one of those up. Uh, and next Sunday, we have a start here. Next Sunday is our Super Bowl Sunday Challenge. We challenge both churches to donate at least 50 cans of soup. Uh, and we're on our way. We need a few more. Uh, so uh, the, uh, all the cans of soup will be donated to the Bluffton Community Assistance Food Pantry. Uh, so uh, please uh, be generous and uh, bring some cans of soup uh, for our challenge for next week. Also on the 16th of February then, Wednesday the 16th, the Melody Circle is inviting both churches to a Valentine's dinner. That will be at the Lunchbox in Pandora. It is uh, $14 a person. That includes your gratuity. Uh, and you can just pay that at the door. But they do need to know if you're coming uh, by next su uh, Sunday the 13th. Yeah, that's next Sunday. Uh, so uh, that they know how many reservations to put in. Bake, bake steak or bake chicken. If you're interested, see Regina or see myself. Uh, and we'll make sure that you get signed up. As many of you are aware, um, the women's Bible study, because of illness and weather and everything else, uh, we never got that off the ground. So we are postponing that. We're not canceling it. We're postponing it until after Easter. Uh, so that if you had any interest in participating in the, uh, in the Dust of the Rabbi uh, study that, that Patty was going to do, that will be taking place. It's just going to be after Easter, and we'll get you more information about that. Instead of that, we will be starting uh, our Bible study early. It is actually uh, going to be starting on Thursday, the 24th of February, and that is Death and Resurrection of the Messiah, Bringing God's Shalom to a World in Chaos by Ray Vanderlaan. Same guy who's done, done the study, is done, doing the study that, uh, that uh, Patty was leading. Uh, you had actually started this, a uh, few lessons in here, before the pandemic hit, and then everything kind of stopped in its tracks. So we'll be getting uh, more of this. If you would like to participate, we're going to be do, doing that live, but if you'd like to participate by Zoom or um, by phone, uh, please let us know, and we'll try and make arrangements for you. We do have some copies of this at the office. Some of you may already have a copy if you started this study earlier. Um, two weeks from now is a contemporary service, uh, Sunday the 20th, and on Saturday the 19th, the day before, is when we rescheduled the uh, escape room activity for the youth fifth grade and over, uh, so that will be on Saturday the 19th. Um, is there a trustees meeting Tuesday? Yes, we're supposed to have a trustee meeting down at the Bethel Annex on Tuesday at 7 o'clock, and we're going to move it down here to Zion at 7 o'clock for the trustee meeting Tuesday. Very good. Thank you. I was pointing to you and I hear this voice. I go, wait a second. I know you have a lot of skills, but ventriloquist was not one that I was anticipating. Thank you, Gary. So that, that'll be this Tuesday night. Um, just a, a couple concerts in the newsletter. There's uh, one on Thursday the 17th over at Fort Wayne. It's Winter Jam. It has Colton Dixon, Torrin Wells, Skillet, and some others. Uh, some of you might be familiar with some of those groups. Uh, also on Friday the 25th up in Maumee, Stand Together Tour, which is Newsboys, Danny Gokey, Mac Powell, and some others. If any of you have any interest in going to either one of those, please see me, uh, because maybe we can get a few people to go uh, to those. I think they'd be very enjoyable. I know that uh, Alicia Welch has a birthday today, so she not, but, uh, if you're watching, Alicia, happy birthday. Uh, and... Hayden had a birthday this past week on Wednesday, so happy fifth birthday, young lady. And also um, tomorrow, Bob McVetta and Briar Boyles has a birthday. 
And uh, also on Friday, this past Friday, the 4th, Svendi Ernst had a birthday. She's um, Darius's wife. They're the missionaries we support down in Mexico. Uh, so happy birthday to Svendi. You have anybody else have birthdays and anniversaries this month? Okay. Oh, yes. I know. Well, we got to sing to you, you know. So you want to... All right, you want to lead that? Thank you very much. I, this is a busy month for me. Within the next two weeks, my mother, my sister, my grandson, and my dad all have birthdays the next two weeks. So February is a busy time. Anyway, are there any other announcements we need to share before we begin worship this morning? All right, Nancy, will you prepare our hearts and minds for worship? Thank you, Nancy. Welcome to this place where children and their elders sit side by side, where heaven and earth embrace in peace, where God has been, is, and always will be. Welcome to this place as we gather with all of God's children, where we find God's love, where we hear the tender voice of Jesus, where the Spirit teaches us new songs. Welcome to this place where all is made ready by our God, where we bring our hunger and find food, where we bring our brokenness and find healing, where we bring ourselves and find acceptance. Let us pray. God of the open road, God of the twisted path, 
God of the narrow and upward way. Your people are gathered for worship. In this hour, give us provision for the journey, courage and faith and compassion and endurance to face any hardship. Open our eyes to see you walking beside us, protecting us, encouraging us, and loving us. And we pray this in the name of Jesus who moves us. Amen. Will you please rise and join me in the uh, opening hymn, How Great Thou Art, uh, which is on the screen or on page 77 of your hymnal. And for our next hymn, we'll be singing, This is the Day that the Lord Hath Made, on page 657 or on the screen. We'll sing this through twice.
you may be seated. We're going to be going to the Lord with our joys and concerns. Before we do, I want to share a card with you. Uh, it's a thank you card. And uh, while we didn't really publish uh, who our Christmas family was, um, she wrote this card and she acknowledged it over uh, it, uh, Pleasant View as well. Uh, we both uh, helped the same family and it, it was Carol uh, Stigman and her daughter and the uh, four grandchildren that she took in um, last fall. Uh, so this is a dear uh, Pleasant View in Mount Cory. Uh, we'd like to thank you from our hearts. We feel very blessed by the church families coming together for us. Each of the kids and I were amazed at all the personalized gifts. Uh, you should have seen everyone's faces, and she has pictures to prove it. Uh, thank you also for the gift cards and monetary gifts. We have the best church families. Love, Carol, Lauren, Bailey, Luke, Catalina, and Jose. Uh, so they were our uh, Christmas family this year, and uh, uh, needless to say, when she uh, gave her personal thanks over at Pleasant View, where she and her family have all gone, um, it was quite an emotional thing. So uh, thank you all uh, for your generosity. Um, you never cease to amaze me. Um, some joys and concerns I want to share with you, and then I'll open it up to others who may have some. Uh, a young family, a friend of uh, mine over Wyandotte uh, County area, Matt and Sarah Johnson, uh, yesterday morning lost their home to a fire. It started in the chimney and it took everything. Um, they got out with their three kids and that was about it. Um, Brock, you know the devastation what one of those chimney fires can, can do. So uh, please be with Matt and Sarah. They are uh, strong Christian people and they, they have a lot of family and friends who are rallying around them and caring for them. But um, it was a total loss other than the clothes they had on their back. So um, they, are, they feel blessed that they all were able to get out. Uh, do have a praise. Uh, Patty Welsh is with us and feeling better on the way uh, to full recovery. Uh, and Merlin had eye surgery this past week and that went well. So we praise God for that. And Nordy also had a procedure on her eye, uh, or she has one on her eye coming up on Monday. Um, Harold Parkins has an appointment with a cardiologist tomorrow. Uh, they're looking at uh, some other things that may be going on with him. Uh, Mary Ann uh, Routson has some outpatient surgery coming up this Friday. So I want to lift uh, Mary Ann up in prayer. Um, uh, Regina has been battling some sinus respiratory issues all week long. And so we want to lift her up. I know Sue Koontz has uh, uh, this Thursday uh, some surgery on her hand. Uh, we did get a message uh, from uh, Bill and Phyllis Davis, um, who uh, some of you know they've attended here uh, a couple of times and are faithful about watching online. Their son, um, uh, Tracy, had a heart attack on Saturday morning. Um, and uh, do you have an update or something on that? I do. Um, they put in a stent, and he um, is on a lot of medication and is still in pain. Okay. But... That's where he's at right now. And Phyllis also had a praise. Bill is 83 today. Oh, well, happy birthday to Bill. We didn't catch that earlier, so uh, wonderful. Are there other announcements or uh, prayer requests, joys or concerns? Oh, yes. Uh, I, I know the one you're going to do. Haley had her surgery this, this past week, so that was great. Go ahead, uh, Tim. If you would just keep uh, Sherry and Ben Logan in your prayers. Um, as I mentioned last month, they lost their grandson, Jacob, to sudden infant death syndrome. Uh, uh, Sarah had one. I just ask that you continue to keep Haley in your prayers. Her surgery on her ACL went great, and um, just ask, you know, prayers for the healing now. So <laughs> Complete and quick. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah. uh, that young lady's been through a lot, and uh, it, we certainly will be praying for her. Yes? Okay, I just want to do an update on Scott. Um, he had to have his pulmonary 
test rescheduled. Um, he still hasn't done that yet. Um, he also, after his testing two weeks ago on his legs, um, he was supposed to have a follow-up that following Monday. He, has to post he had to postpone that because that Friday night he started with a nosebleed and by Sunday night he couldn't get to stop. So we were in the emergency room in Bluffton twice on Mon Sunday and Monday and then in the emergency room in Finley Monday also. So he was battling with that, so we had to postpone all of his other bigger issues to take care of the nose. So um, as soon as I find out anything else on any procedures, I'll let you guys know. Thank you. Uh, and I was told over at the uh, other uh, church, uh, some of you may know him because I think he served as a trustee over here at Mount Corey. Terry Strom uh, passed away uh, in the last couple of days, so we need to remember their family as well. Bob? Yeah, Gina um, is, has been transferred from the hospital to a rehab facility. Uh, she seems to be COVID-free, but uh, is very weak yet and uh, um, still uh, not able to move around on her own. So I don't know how long she'll be in rehab, but she's going to have to be able to get up and get out of bed on her own before she can leave. Right. So. Well, we'll continue to be praying for Gina. She's had a long road. So is Jason. And her husband, yeah, Jason as well. Yes, yeah, Nancy. Yes. Okay. Yeah, and I heard about that over there. Rosie Ziffel, if anybody of you know her, who, she attends over at uh, Pleasant View. It's her cousin. Uh, so she mentioned that as well. So, yeah. Uh, so, Ron Zimmerly. Any others? Do you want to pray for travel mercies for John and Jean? They're taking off for Florida this Thursday. Eight days too late, I might add. <laughs> but I hope you uh, have a wonderful time down there. If there are no other uh, prayer requests, uh, let's join in our prayer hymn today where he leads me. The first and fourth verses, page 338, are on the screen, and you may remain seated.
Dear God, Heavenly Father, we come into your house this morning so grateful to have a place so that we can come and worship you and offer you our praise. We know that you are with us through it all and everything we go through. We know that you have a plan for this church and you have a plan for each one of us individually. And Lord, we just ask that we be able to see through the power of the Holy Spirit what you would have us to do and where you would have us to be as opposed to us trying to make you fit into what we want. Lord, you are so gracious and merciful. We thank you for bringing us through the storms of this past week. And we're grateful for the sunshine that's outside and feel certainly the warmth of the sunshine inside as well. Lord, we know that we can come to you with our prayers and concerns and our joys, and we certainly give you thanks for the healing that you've begun on Nordy and Merlin, certainly on Haley. Ask that the healing continue till completion and that it be as swift and painless as possible. Lord, we also want to lift up those who are facing current health problems and surgeries in the days and weeks ahead and that you be with them and let them know that you were there, particularly for Harold, for Mary Ann, for Regina, for Sue, for Scott, and continue in your healing work with Patty. We just thank you that we can come to you and share our burdens with you. We thank you for the progress that Gina's made and certainly that she's no longer positive for COVID. Lord, give her the strength to, to take the next step to get out of the hospital and go to rehab and be with Jason as he tries to tend to her and care for her. Lord, we know that there are also people this morning that are struggling with the loss of a loved one. It's never easy. No matter how long a life or short a life, how long an illness or how short an illness, we're never quite ready to say goodbye. But we have the hope and assurance that you've given us through your son Jesus. That through faith in him, we will have eternal life and we will see them again. So this morning, we lift up the family of Ron Zimmerly. We lift up the family of Terry Strom. We lift up Sherry and Ben Logan and the loss of their grandson. Lord, comfort them. Put your arms around them and let them know that they're not going through this alone. We have a number of other people that we've prayed for in our bulletins that we continue to put our faith and trust in you that you will answer them as you see fit. And we know that there are those in the congregation here this morning or those who are watching online that have unspoken requests on their hearts and minds this morning and we take a moment to lift them to you now. Dear Heavenly Father, you provide us so much. You not only give us a roof over our heads, clothes on our back, and food to eat. You give us family and friends and people who love and care for us here in this world. And you ask so little in return just for our love and our obedience. So, Lord, as an act of obedience and an act of praise and worship, we brought with us this morning our tithes and offerings and put them in the basket. Also, the offerings in the 
birthday and anniversary church collection. Just ask that you bless each gift and each giver. Lord, help us have the wisdom to use in a way that would be pleasing to you. And most of all this morning, dear God, we thank you for the gift of your son, Jesus, who loved us while we were yet sinners and paid the price for us so that we could have that hope of reunion and an eternity in heaven with you. And we are so grateful. And it is in the name of that Son, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, that we pray the prayer that he taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Okay, kids, you can come forward. Hi guys, have a seat. Don't worry, we wouldn't start without you, Joseph. Well, I'm so glad to see you here. Did you have fun during the storm? Did you like having days off school? I bet you did. Did you get out and play in the snow any? Was it windy when you were out there? It was. It was even windier at night, let me tell you. How do you know it's windy? Could you see the wind? No? Well, how do you know it was blowing then? You could feel it. How else do you know it was blowing? You can hear it. You can hear it. Yes, you can hear it. What else? It's pushing other things. Snow into drifts. Trees bending back and forth, going over. So there's a lot of ways we can see wind or he, know that wind is there, but we can't see it, right? How many of you have ever turned on a light switch and the light came on? Have you ever done that or seen somebody do that? Have you ever seen the electricity go from that switch over to that light bulb when it came, came on? Have you actually seen the electricity? No. The light came on, and we know electricity is there, but we couldn't see it, right? Just because we can't see something doesn't mean it's not real. So we can't see the wind, we can't see electricity, we know it's real. Well, we're gonna talk this morning about somebody, it's called the Holy Spirit, and it's a part of God. And when Jesus was alive, and he was alive, just like you and me, flesh and bone, and he ate food and did all that stuff, slept at night, got up in the morning, and then he died for us, and then he rose again and became alive, just again, like you and I, and then went to heaven. But he said, I don't want to leave you alone. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to send the Holy Spirit to come to be with you. And he can live in you and be with you always, just as I have been with you when I've been here on earth. So when you hear somebody talk about the Holy Spirit, that's what he's talking about. Can you see the Holy Spirit? No, I've never seen the Holy Spirit. Do you know, how do we know he's there? You can feel him. You can, what? You can hear a voice, uh, you can hear him tell you things and, and, and tell you what's right and what's wrong and which way you should go. He can guide and direct you. And he can change lives. He's, you can see people whose lives have changed because they've come to know Jesus and took the Holy Spirit in their heart. And because they changed, we know that the Holy Spirit is there. So just like electricity and just like the wind, we may not be able to see him, but the Holy Spirit is real. And you can trust that. Let's pray. 
Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for the gift of your Son and for the gift of your Holy Spirit. Help us to take it in our hearts, to hold on to it always, and listen for that still small voice as it guides us each and every day. In your precious and holy name we pray. Amen. Thanks for coming up. You can go back to your seats. Good morning. <laughs> okay, today's scriptural, scripture verses are going to be read from John chapter 14, 25 through 27, Acts chapter 1, 3 through 5, Acts chapter 2, 1 through 4, 14, 16 through 21. John 14, all this I have spoken while still with you, but the advocate, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my home will teach you all things and will remind you of everything I have said to you. Peace I leave with you, my peace I give you. I do not give you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled and do not be afraid. Acts 1. After his suffering, he presented himself to them and gave many convincing proofs that he was alive. He appeared to them over a period of 40 days and spoke about the kingdom of God. On one occasion, while he was eating with them, he gave them this command. Do not leave Jerusalem, but wait for the gift my father promised, which you have heard me speak about. For John baptized with water, but in a few days you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. Acts 2. When the day of Pentecost came, they were all together in one place. Suddenly, a sound like the blowing of a violent wind came from heaven and filled the whole house where they were sitting. They saw what seemed to be tongues of fire that separated and came to rest on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit enabled them. Then Peter stood up with the 11, raised his voice and addressed the crowd. Fellow Jews and all of you who live in Jerusalem, let me explain, let me explain this to you. Listen carefully to what I say. No, this is what the, no, this is what was spoken by the prophet Joel. In the last days, God says, I will pour out my spirit on all people. Your sons and daughters will prophesy. Your young men will see visions. Your old men will dream dreams. Even on, even on my servants, both men and women, I will pour out my spirit in those days, and they will prophesy. I will show wonders in the heavens above and signs on the earth below, blood and fire, fire and billow billows of smoke. The sun will be turned to darkness and the moon to, to blood before the coming of the great and glorious day of the Lord. And everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. Thank you, Stacy, and may the Lord bless the reading of his holy word this morning. Will you pray with me? May the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable to you, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. Well, if you are a parent, especially as small children, you know uh, the time, that horrible time when you are at the store or someplace else with them and you turn around for a split second and then you can't see them and they've gone someplace. And the terror and panic that fills you until the moment that you can see them again. Children have that same, same experience sometimes with not being able to see their parents. I can remember one time visiting Cedar Point with my sister and my grandparents and I was walking a couple of steps ahead in the causeway and I didn't realize that they had stopped to take care of something and they didn't realize I hadn't stopped and I got a few feet away. And of course, the 
causeway is crowded. There's a lot of people. And, and I turned around and suddenly they weren't there. I'm lost. And there's panic that sets in until people parted and then I could see them again and everything was all right. Unfortunately, whether the separation is by war, by adoption, by, God forbid, abduction, separation isn't just a fear for some people, it's a reality. And parents will go to extraordinary lengths to find their child and will never fully give up the search, at least not in their hearts. Parents will spare no expense as with resolute passion they search for their missing children. So does God. God has lost children who have gone the wrong direction, lost their bearings, lost their place in this life, and lost their vision of the next life. God initiated a massive three-phase search and rescue strategy to find the lost children. The first phase was Israel. God wanted a nation through whom to show his character and to call people back to himself and point all people to the first coming of Jesus Christ. And then the second phase was Jesus Christ himself. And Jesus declared, I am the way, the truth, and the life, and no one comes to the Father except through me. We are lost, and Jesus is the way back home. By his death on the cross and his resurrection, we can be re reunited to our Heavenly Father. And then the third phase is what we're reading today in the story, and that is the church. And we'll be looking at the book of Acts. And just as an aside, the book of Acts is really a second of two book set that was written by Luke. The gospel of Luke describes the second phase of God's plan, God finding his lost children through Jesus Christ. And then the book of Acts, the second book, which Luke addressed to the same person, Theopolis, as his gospel, this describes the third phase, God finding his lost children through the church. Everyone who comes into a relationship with God through faith in Christ belongs to the community that God is building, the church. And I'm talking the church universal here, not individual buildings. The church is commissioned to be the presence of Christ in the lower story, whose purpose is to spread the good news all over the world that Christ has prepared the way back into relationship with God telling his story by the way we live and the words we speak. See, the church points people to the second coming of Christ when he will return to restore God's original vision, whenever that might be. And all believers form the body of Christ. You see, Jesus knew he was about to return home to heaven, and he wanted to reassure his disciples that they wouldn't be left on their own for very long. And he told them to go to Jerusalem and stay there until they receive the gift of, that God is sending to them. You see, he knew we couldn't fulfill his mission on our own. So God sent the Holy Spirit to sustain us and empower us and to fulfill God's upper story plan. Acts 1 verse 8 says, you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in all of Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. So the disciples now, numbering about 120 of them, waited in Jerusalem as Jesus commanded. So why Jerusalem? Well, it was because the day of Pentecost was coming. The day of Pentecost was celebrated 50 days after the Passover, and it was approaching, and about a million people would be in Jerusalem. You might say, well, wait a second. I thought the Passover, uh, the Pentecost hadn't happened yet. Well, there actually did exist a feast of the Pentecost, also known as the Feast of Weeks, to the Jews. And in Greek, Pentecost means 50th, so 50 days from the Passover. They also call it Shavuot in Jewish 
language, Hebrew. And this was primarily a thanksgiving for the first fruits of wheat of the harvest. But later, it also became a remembrance of God giving the law, the Torah, to Moses and the Israelites on Mount Sinai. So the Feast of Pentecost already existed, but for the believers of Jesus, Pentecost was about to have a whole other meaning. On the day of Pentecost, the 120 disciples hear a mighty wind and are anointed with tongues of fire as the Holy Spirit is poured upon them. And immediately they're filled with this newfound courage and boldness to carry out their mission. You say, well, what's the evidence of that? All you need to do is look at the 11 disciples right after Jesus was crucified. Where were they? They were huddling in a closed room, scared to death that they would be next And then we see the transformation from them hiding in that hideout out of fear for their lives to being street evangelists, boldly proclaiming the gospel to anyone who had passed by. When the Spirit came upon them, they were given the ability to speak in many languages of the world, which they had not been able to until that time. And because, and they became cross cultural missionaries as people who gathered, heard about the wonderful works of God in their own native languages. And the people were amazed at the miracle of the languages and asked themselves, what does this all mean? You see, since sin no longer separates us from God, the spirit who previously existed behind the thick curtain in the temple now takes up residence in us, in each believer. His new temple, we are God's temple to be with us always. The Bible tells us that the Lord denying disciple Peter, now filled with the Spirit, boldly and publicly explains the meaning of the events of Pentecost to those gathered said, Jesus is alive. He is Lord. He's the Messiah that you have been looking for. And that by entering into a relationship with him, you can be with God forever. No more sacrifices and burnt offerings. No more intricate rules. All they needed was to repent, believe, and be baptized. Your sins will be forgiven and you will be saved from the punishment that you deserve because of these sins. Folks, that message will preach today. But on that day, a massive, diverse, multicultural crowd, about 3,000 people, responded to Peter by repenting and being baptized. And they became the first people of the church, becoming a unified community The bride of Christ, the church, was born. The new church met from house to house, eating meals together, devoting themselves to teaching and learning, to fellowship and using their homes as places of God's love. Historians tell us that these home churches were likely around 30 people each. And friends, we may think that that's something from 2,000 years ago. But I tell you, a little over 150 years ago, the people that began this church, this congregation, before this structure was erected, met in house churches too. They were family, and they prayed together, and they took care of each other and their neighbors. And that care was given unconditionally. And folks, that's why it is so important that we continue to meet together. This mission is way too hard to complete on our own. We need each other. When others saw what was going on, people filled with joy for what Jesus had done for them, they wanted to be a part of it. These little churches grew daily with new people who wanted to be saved and enjoy the same fellowship they saw in those house churches, to be a part of a family. 
And the truth is, we all have that need to be a part, to be accepted, to be cared for, to be a part of something bigger than ourselves. And for those of us who are Christian, we know that emptiness is filled only with the Holy Spirit of God. Unfortunately, for way too many people, oftentimes in the inner cities and minority populations, the gangs, they turn to gangs to fill that role in a misguided way of trying to feel accepted, only to be bitterly disappointed. What about us today? How are we doing? We're a little church. What do people see? Do they see people filled with joy for what Jesus has done for us? God is calling us to align our lives with God's story through the power of the Holy Spirit within us. Remember what I mentioned earlier about our purpose, purpose of the church, to spread the good news all over the world that Christ has prepared the way back into relationship with God. And see, he's given us everything we need to succeed. He's given us his word, and he's given us his spirit. That's all we need. We're called not just to do witnessing, although we're instructed to be prepared and ready in any time to give our witness and our testimony for the hope that we have. But we're called not to do witnessing, but be witnesses. This is more all-encompassing, a 24-7 role. In addition to telling others about Jesus, it is expressed in how we live and how we treat others. And our testimony is expressed in lives that are lived in a way that reflect the values of God. You see, the force of our message will be our changed lives, the people we are becoming in our relationship with God. People are drawn to Jesus not just by what, they, by what they hear with their ears, but also what they see with their eyes. So I ask again, how are we doing? What must we work harder at, do better at, to be witnesses of Christ and be the witnesses that Christ called us to be? See, the first church services were experienced in these small house churches, house churches over the evening meal, over dinner. It was here that they not only had a great feast, but also ate bread and drank from the cup to remember the death of Jesus and all that it had done to change the outcome of their lives. Some 2,000 years later, we still are given that privilege to remember. To remember. To remember that on the night before he was betrayed, Jesus met with his disciples around the Passover table to share the Seder meal. And in the middle of the meal, he took the bread and he held it up and he thanked his father for it and he blessed it. And then he broke it. And he said, this is my body broken for you. As often as you eat of it, do this in remembrance of me. And at the end of the meal, he took the cup. And once again, he held it up. He gave thanks to his father and he blessed it. He said, this is my blood. Blood of the new covenant poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. As oft as you drink of this cup, do this in remembrance of me. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we... Thank you for these gifts of bread and fruit of the vine. 
We thank you for the opportunity to remember just the sacrifice that was made on our behalf. Lord, may this become the body and blood of Jesus to us that as we take it in, we are renewed, we are restored, we are refreshed, we are reinvigorated because we have reestablished ourselves as a part of the body of Christ and have an obligation to go and share it with all whom we come in contact with. In your precious and holy name we pray, amen. Friends, the United Methodist Church celebrates an open table. That means you do not have to be a member of this church. You do not have to be a member of any church to participate in the Lord's Supper. You just have to come with a willing and seeking heart, looking to repent of your sins and asking Jesus to be a part of your life. So friends, you are invited to come forward. The table is set. Come along this way, pick up one of the cups with the bread in it and come to the middle and I will share with you the bread and the juice and then you can go back to your seats either through the middle or this side. The table's set. Come.
Shall we pray? Heavenly Father, we thank you for this time of remembrance. We are so grateful for the sacrifice that was made, the price that was paid for our sins. And Lord, as we leave this place, help us take a part of that body and blood of Christ out of these walls. Because, because of that blood, we are washed white as snow and are seen righteous in your eyes. Let us help others experience that same joy. In your precious and holy name we pray. Amen. Will you join me in our closing hymn this morning? Come we that love the Lord, found on page 732 or up on the screen. And if you're able, please stand. Now until we meet again, the peace of God which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of His Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen.